Hi, my name is David Cheeseman. I'm a student at Johns Hopkins University School for Engineering Professionals. I'm in the master's program and taking a covert channels course instructed by Dr. Lanier Watkins. In this video, I will be demonstrating a covert channel implemented using the QUIC protocol. To start out with, for the tools, I use the AIO QIC library written in Python. This is a HTTP client and server implementation. The QUIC transport protocol has multiple headers that are exploitable for a covert channel. The specific one I've implemented is the connection ID, which is a 64-bit value. The QUIC protocol is defined in RFC 9000 and RFC 9396. In this particular case, RFC 9000 has the information that we need. Uh, in RFC 9000, section 5.1, it describes that the connection ID must not contain any information that can be used by an external observer to correlate them with other connection IDs for the same connection. And then in section 8.1, it says additionally, an endpoint may consider the peer address validated if the peer uses a connection ID chosen by the endpoint and the connection ID contains at least 64 bits of entropy. This means we can use the connection ID to embed encrypted payloads, which are inherently high entropy. This would make it indistinguishable from benign traffic. Moving on to the implementation, we first start out with the CC crypto library. It is a basic library of helper functions I developed for this purpose using the PyCryptoDome library. You can see at the top here I have a to-do to use the existing crypto modules built into AIO QIC, but for speed of implementation for the assignment deadline, I used a library that I was familiar with. Moving on to the connection module in AIO QIC, the first modification that I made was to add some globally accessible values for other modules to reference. This includes the RSA bit strength and agreed upon public exponent, an AES block size, global byte order for encoding the end modulus of an RSA key, uh, CID history length, which is used to keep track of con connection IDs so that they won't be duplicated in uh, message received buffers, uh, peer metadata information, which is a map of peer IPs and the information that is needed to encrypt and decrypt messages, uh, a lock on that, which may not be necessary, uh, and remote commands enabled, which is default to false, but for this de or demonstration, I set it to true, since one of the commands allows for remote execution of uh, commands. Now moving on to line 408 of the specific implementation version. We have the section where client ID or connection IDs are selected. Uh, first, it uh, checks if there's any pure metadata information, which would be the server, and constructs it if it doesn't exist. Then if it is a client, it will uh, queue up or try to get a CID from the queue and raise an exception if the CID queue is empty, because one of the first messages sent to the server will be the public modulus. If it's not a client, the server just needs to generate a random CID. This isn't even the one that will be used and sent to the client, that's the host ID. Moving on to the host ID section, and this uh, implementation, there's a replenish connection IDs function, which creates a buffer of connection IDs. Uh, this is where the queue will be pulled for payloads that are sent to the destination. If the queue is empty, a keep alive uh, instruction will automatically be populated in the queue to prevent dropping of sync of the encrypted channel. And then the rest are just filled up with random uh, host IDs so that the buffer is the correct size in this implementation. Right now there is a bug in this implementation where a random host ID is being sent to the covert channel client. And that's something that I have to address in the future. But for now, a few messages can be sent back and forth before it drops sync. Now moving on to line 1988. In this implementation, we have the actual covert channel processing. First, the IP is selected or extracted and the metadata is retrieved. If the connection ID that is being used is not in the history, it will continue on. 
in this particular chunk of code, the same connection ID will be seen multiple times, and we don't want duplication of those in the byte buffers. The CID history will then be updated, and then the byte buffers will be appended with the connection ID. On the server side, the original destination connection ID will hold the connection ID that has the payload. And then on the server side, the connection ID local to this function will have the uh, host ID sent by the server. If a public key has not been received in the key exchange between the client and server, we get into this section. On the server side, the first connection needs a connection ID, so a random one is generated for that purpose. And then on the client side, it needs to make one request to receive the last chunk of the RSA modulus from the server. And thus, after the correct number of RSA bits have been received, then the, they are truncated accordingly and then saved uh, to the peer metadata. Moving on, if we already have a public key from the peer, whether it's the server or the client, we will attempt a decryption. This function attempts the decryption and will set this to either the decrypted payload or none. If a decrypted payload is available, then we clear the byte buffer and break apart the command, which is the first byte of the decrypted message, and the decrypted message, which is the rest of the byte buffer. An M is just a simple message that is logged to the server logs, and then a acknowledgement is queued which is just an, a message prepended with M and the index of the message received. A command C is a remote command requested to be executed on the endpoint receiving the message. The command is executed and standard out standard error is queued up as a message for the recipient. Finally, there is a keep alive message, which is just the letter K, and this is necessary, especially in cases of remote commands for the recipient to have requests go out so they can receive the CIDs back that encode the standard out stereo response. Finally, at the end here, we update the peer metadata and release the lock on the data structure. This uh, module is the command line interface. Both the server and the client will utilize the same command line interface that takes user input and runs the appropriate processing. And from now here, we can move on to the demo. In the readme, one uh, can simply just run the server, which at the moment has the same signature as the original AIO QIC. In the future, I will optionally add a flag for the client to set up the server public key if it is received out of band. So first we'll go on ahead and start the server. and the client. This is the initial key exchange. Right now, the RSA bits are set to 1024 just to expedite this uh, process. If we take one of the end moduluses transmitted during the key exchange and bring them over to CyberChef, we can compare them to random bytes. The entropy here is relatively low and is showing as being in the range of English text, but part of that is because we have such a small message. If we compare them to the same number of random bytes, the Shannon entropy is within the same order of magnitude. So we have 3.94 for the public modulus that was sent by the server. And if we compare that to random bytes, we have 3.96. Now moving on to the client, we can send a message. So I'll just say the message, hello. The bytes are then transmitted and on the server side, we can see that the message was received. If we want to send a file, we can do F colon and then the file that we want to send. So test file.txt, the bytes will be sent over. And then we will receive on this end a file prepended by the IP address. And we can see here quick can't be distinguished from benign traffic. Finally, we can send a remote command by using the C command and issue a basic command. So the, over here we see that the receive command uh, shows up in the logs and at this time the standard out and standard error is queued up 
in the host ID buffer. And to receive it, we just need to send a keep alive. And here we have the output. Who am I? Output Anuvius to standard out and nothing to standard error. Future work for this covert channel include exploiting other high entropy header values to increase the bandwidth of the channel, as well as finding mitigations for disruption from uh, active warden injecting or substituting random bytes in the communication of the CIDs. I hope you enjoyed this demo. The code is available on GitHub under Nubius slash QICC. Thanks for your time.